Now, uh, let's go to the comic genius and environmental campaigner, Alistair McGowan. Words I never thought I'd hear myself saying. Alistair, I'm just one of your very biggest fans, so um, I must tell you I'm very, very happy that you've joined us. Well, that's very nice, George. And, uh, nice to say good evening to you, and that's two words I thought I'd never hear myself saying. Good evening, George <laughs> Galloway. So there we are. <laughs> Thanks We're very equal. much. Thanks very much, Alistair. Now, um, you are appearing in advance of uh, the Greener Office Week. You wouldn't have heard me say earlier that the only thing green in the Talksport office is the food that's climbing out of the fridge. Right. Uh, the, uh, as I looked around, I could see the environmental catastrophe that our office was. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, um, looking at the stats, that that's true of many, if, if not most, uh, offices. So tell us what Greener Office Week is about. Uh, well, it's, it's literally that, and I've been to those offices there sometimes, uh, some, several times some time ago, so I know exactly what you're talking about, <laughs> you're telling the truth. Yeah. I also, about five years ago, George talked to James Whale on this station in this time slot about green issues, and we set the phone lines alight yeah. for about an hour and a half. Yeah, because so J James, not James was... Uh, uh, James leaning was... Towards Oh, well, no, my audience is, but James's audience was a rather different uh, segment than mine. Oh, good. But uh, Green Office Week is, uh, is what we're talking about, and, uh, yeah, it starts next week, 9th to the 13th of May, and it's really a campaign um, to encourage people to, to be greener at work and to, to, uh, to take the behavior which a lot of people now are embracing uh, at home uh, into the workplace. And the statistics, at the, at the risk of sounding like a, a conservative MP, many of whom we heard this morning, twisting statistics, but uh, the statistic, as William Hague might say, is that 53% uh, of office workers say they are not any greener within the last year. But for that does mean, of course, that 47%, and as you know, George, that's just under half, uh, <laughs> say that they are a lot greener uh, and have, have implemented green practices in their office in the last 12 months. And that's not a bad statistic. Let's face it, 47% have made an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of people have to pay good money to get you to perform because you are one of the very, very greatest. So I'm grateful for that lapse into uh, William Hague. Thank you um, very much. Now, what can we do? Tell us, if, for people listening here who work in offices, give us an example of some things that they could do to make things better. Well, there are so many things, and uh, recycling is obviously something which a lot of offices are now doing. 69%, uh, in fact, I have the stats in front of me, uh, said that last year their offices were recycling and their workplaces were recycling paper. And then obviously things like uh, energy use is, is a huge part of things. And uh, a lot of offices, I'm sure any, any green-leaning people like, like me will have walked past offices at night, as I've just done on my way home. And you see offices ablaze, uh, even though they're empty, with the lights being left on, computers being left on, which would only take, you know, 20 seconds to reboot. So there's no need for them to be on. But even things like uh, a beautiful sunny day like today, I was in an office uh, at one point where the lights were on in the foyer all day, blazing away, and you think, it's a beautiful sunny day outside. You've yeah. got glass-fronted offices. Why are your lights on? I made that point to the people. Yeah. Um, also, those lights frequently are not low-energy bulbs, so they give off heat, which then means that your, uh, your foyer is becoming very hot, your reception area is becoming very hot, and then people will put air conditioning on. So then you've got two, and if you've got television screens on there as well, which a lot of reception areas have now, You've got the lights, the television screens on, causing heat being used needlessly, and then obviously aircon is put on to counteract the heat given off by these things. So then you've got three energy sources, you know, being used needlessly, things like that. And, and offices have been able to cut their expenses massively by uh, employing greener practices. Yeah, that, that's one of the puzzling things. Why, why isn't that, uh, given that some people know the price of everything and the value of nothing, mm. why don't they do a valuable thing that actually uh, would save them quite a price? an awful lot of offices are doing now and, and as I say it's, it's, it's practically half uh, of the people who, who work in offices say that they've, they've noticed a difference within the last year uh, but what uh, another large proportion of people surveyed in this survey conducted by Avery who as I say are behind Green Office Week next week have said is that uh, they, a lot of them feel that management need to do more that the workforce are willing to do more um, but they're not getting the lead from above so if there are any managers in it it's really a question of listening to your workforce who want to bring in green practices, which, as I say, a lot of them have done, a, a, do, do carry out at home. But it's, it's the whole thing, really, George. I mean, as you said, what, what can people do? I mean, uh, right at the top end is obviously, you know, if you've got a large office building, you've already got a large roof space, and uh, I just put solar panels on my house here, and uh, it's not a cheap thing to do, but you, you get the money back, and then some, because you're feeding into the national grid, you know. So there's lots of offices with, with huge roof space that could be used for generating power. 
but on a smaller scale, you know, it's just, uh, as I say, things like recycling, working out how you travel into work, whether you can, you know, uh, travel in a more environmentally friendly way, sharing cars, walking in, of course, which is great. And then things like opening the windows rather than putting the air con on or just simply dressing for the season, something as simple as that, which in summer and winter we tend to wear the same things into work and mm. uh, put the heating on or, yeah. or the air con to counter the temperature difference. And the jumper is one of our greatest weapons against uh, global warming. What a very good slogan. The Thank jumper is one of our greatest weapons against global warming. It's sim yeah. simple, but, but, but absolutely correct. Well, so much of it is common sense, really, you know, and, uh, but it's also about making the connections. And I think even if there are sceptics who say, well, global warming would happen anyway, you know, the other things that are happening, which uh, are, are leading us towards an environmental, I hesitate to use the word catastrophe, but changes, at least in our environment, let's say, you know, we are running out of resources. We keep cutting down trees needlessly. We're burning fossil fuels needlessly. We know about Fukushima and, the, you know, the, the nature of nuclear power. We need to, we can reduce our energy, and it's a very easy thing to do. And, uh, you know, we, we need to preserve our natural resources and to start reusing things, recycling things, using less, because we are running out of those things. And that, that is a serious a serious issue for us all to face, you know. Th those like uh, those skeptics who uh, deny that something's going on um, would have, I think, been influenced by the experience of Glasgow uh, in the last month. I have come back from a month in Glasgow, mm. uh, brown, a deep brown, mm. from just being out in the street in the month of April yeah. in one of the wettest and normally coldest uh, places uh, in the country. The April for the British Isles as a whole has been the hottest April mm. in all history. Uh, we've got forest fires in April yeah. in the United Kingdom. Something's happening. That's right, and there's weather events going on all around the world. And I think when we talk about comic relief, which obviously as, as a comic we tend to do every year, people really leap on, on side with that and they say, yes, you know, we want to help uh, people in Africa and, and in those developing countries who are suffering extreme poverty. What is also happening now, and uh, I'm not including Glasgow in that, but, uh, you know, we're seeing it in this country, as you said, we're seeing it in Scotland, um, is that weather events are having a huge impact on, on people uh, around the world. And just as we care so much about Africa during comic relief, we need to start thinking on a daily basis that what we're doing here, what we're consuming, what we're over-consuming, what we're putting out into the atmosphere is affecting people all around the world. I mean, you know, when the Fukushima plant accident happened through the uh, earthquake, the, the, the radiation spread a long way, you know, in the sea and in the air. And uh, I think traces were found in Scotland as well of radiation. Mm. That's the sort of thing that we've got to start thinking about, is that whatever we do in this country has an effect thousands of miles away. And if we care about Africa through comet relief and the temperatures in Glasgow are going up, we've got to think what does three degrees centigrade mean to people in Africa? You know, it means yeah. more than the occasional forest fire. It means the inability to survive. Indeed. Now, is there a website, Alistair, for this There week? is. Very simply, there is a website. Uh, it's called greenofficeweek.eu, and it'll tell you the simple things you can do. They've got suggestions for every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for next week, to improve performance in the office in terms, as I said, of things like uh, energy, transport, uh, waste, purchasing, and also what they're encouraging people to do, I think, is to appoint a green ambassador for the, for the week or, or for longer within the office who can implement some of these things as simple as, you know, suggesting that people bring in their own mug for a, for a cup of tea rather than using the, the plastic uh, cups, whatever. Um, simple things like that. And the last day is, is really about uh, next week. If people adhere to the, the stuff on greenofficeweek.eu, is about patting yourself on the back and congratulating yourself for the changes that people will make in their office, which will, as I say, benefit them, benefit their company, and hopefully uh, benefit the world as a whole. Now, look, I think we should, let's review it um, sometime after the end of the week, Alistair. Uh, if you would, would you come in and sit here in the studio and take calls on these I'd, matters? I'd, I'd happily do that, George, if we can. And also, you know, it, it would be very interesting to know what, uh, what you at TalkSport were able to do within your office to make it greener and see who would, who would adhere to some of these uh, policies. Well, if, if someone will give me... A carbon yeah. A lot of football clubs are doing, actually. Chelsea are uh, a very good. They, they sort of top that league table. Uh, in terms of what they're doing to reduce their... Well, let's hope they don't top the other league table at the uh, end of the season. At least that's my point of view. If you give me a space suit, I'll have a look in the fridge here at Talksport. <laughs> See if I can get the green. <laughs> Extirpate it. Alistair McGowan, thanks very much indeed. Alistair McGowan, the comic genius and uh, green uh, campaigner uh, on the subject of greenofficeweek.eu. That's the place to look to see how you can play your part 
in making your office more environmentally friendly, which is an important thing.